Good morning everybody and welcome to this game between Team Freedom Dota 2 and Digital Chaos for the Star Leader I League Star Series Season 3. As per bands, we got the Lone Druid and the Slada as well as the Abaddon and Darkseer. The only one that really sticks out a little bit there is the Abaddon who, while powerful, I wouldn't necessarily put at a first ban level, but you gotta keep in mind Abaddon does incredibly well against a certain kind of hero, against a certain um, archetype of hero, I suppose. And so if Digital Chaos has something in mind there, you know, maybe they wanna go for a Bat Rider, maybe. I don't really think we see a lot of Bat Rider these days, but maybe. You know, maybe they wanna go for a Bat Rider. Then, of course, you don't wanna go up against an Abaddon since he does so well against that particular kind of hero. The main reason why we're watching this game, by the way, is actually the Lashrak. I want to see how he does in competitive. Um, Lashrak is currently one of the least popular heroes in regular Dota. So I'm not talking about the competitive scene, but I think on the overall popularity ranking in just regular pub Dota, Lashrak is 109th? Something like that. Ridiculously low, right? Nobody plays Lashrak. So I'm interested, uh, interested in seeing how he's going to turn out in a competitive match. I'm a little doubtful, I'm not sure how powerful he is, but at the same time his talents aren't actually that bad, he's actually got pretty solid ones, and that, as we all know, makes a big difference. So, uh, Nyx Assassin being banned out, as well as the Invoker for Team Freedom Dota 2. And then we got the Shadow Demon and the Omni Knight from Digital Chaos. Now, Shadow Demon is just very powerful in general. Nothing surprising there. Omni Knight uh, got nerfed a bunch, but he is still rather strong. He also does well against Juggernaut in particular, because Juggernaut comes in, he tries to Omni Slash somebody, Omni Knight casts his ultimate, and then that entire thing is negated. Right, so you kind of don't like going up against something like that. At the same time, Juggernaut does like going for a Diffuser Blade, which kind of makes that matchup a little less straightforward. I don't know. I'm just saying that... Um, Omni Knight is a hero that can be very scary. A Nyx Assassin is just really strong in general, right? Um, Just powerful hero. Nice against Ember Spirit, nice against the Shrug because they got a lot of constant AoE damage going on, which essentially means that the Nyx Assassin can get free stuns. Like, he can just push E and then they are stunned, and it's just really easy and really straightforward. So, not having to deal with something like that is always nice. And then the Invoker, which is most likely just a respect ban. Phantom Lancer coming out, as well as the Earthshaker, Keeper of the Light, and Clockwork. Now, uh, as you can see, all of these heroes I think are a little bit unusual. Maybe not the Kotl, um, but I haven't seen much Earthshaker. Certainly haven't seen Phantom Lancer. Clockwork, also a little bit uncommon. Um, maybe that's just me not watching enough competitive Dota, but these teams in this game, um, they look odd. Right, they definitely look a little bit out of place. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how this match is going to play out. We got the Meepo being banned out, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how this goes down. Now, honestly, I'm not sure how good Team Freedom Dota 2 is. I know some of the players there, right? I know BSJ, I know IX Mike 88. Um, haven't heard of the others. Haven't heard of the others. Although, I don't really know, like, it's been a while since IX Mike has been, like, you know, a top tier pro player. Uh, which makes me a little bit doubtful for the rest of his team. But, alright, we'll see how they do against Digital Chaos here. Alright, uh, I would say, though, that DC is the clear favorite going into this match. Meepo being banned out from Team Freedom Dota. So they're using two respect bans. The Invoker and the Meepo. Now, the Invoker, maybe less so, because Invoker is just good, right? Invoker is just a powerful hero. But uh, the Meepo is definitely a respect ban, especially since you already got an Earthshaker. You know, that makes it even makes it actually a little bit silly. You know, you got an Earthshaker, you got an Ember Spirit even. You're banning out a Meepo. That just shows me that you're scared, right? That just shows me that you're afraid, because it didn't really seem like Digital Chaos would go for that, you know? doesn't even really work for the lineup. Uh, they would have to put the Meepo in the mid, which I suppose is fine. Uh, actually, no. Meepo safe lane. Juggernaut takes mid. I don't know. I will never get that in my head that Juggernaut is just a mid now. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Juggernaut to me will always be just uh, the the classical safe lane carry. And the fact that he isn't anymore is just like, oh, oh it's a little bit weird. Anyway, so the Axe being the last pick for Digital Chaos and the Titan to the last pick for Team Freedom Dota 2. Um, both the offlaners, well, actually Axe could be something else. A little bit, a little bit confused 
who's actually gonna be taking what lane here. Um, it could be uh, some sort of dual offline. Um, the Axe or the Clockwork could both be offline. Um, Axe could just jungle, which isn't really too bad. You know, he does farm pretty quickly. And then the clockwork takes the off lane. But then we don't really have... It could be a safe lane axe. Mid axe. Mid axe. Seems mid axe. Okay, it's going to be the mid axe. It's going to be going up against the Ember Spirit here. Now, I actually like that. I like that. So, <laughs> mid axe is pretty powerful against melee heroes. Because what you do is you skill the counter helix and then you click on them. Which pulls all of the aggro from all of the creeps. And then you spin on the enemy and then they are dead. And turns out that's pretty neat, right? We like that. We like seeing something like that. So the axe has the advantage of having access to counter helix. Pure damage pierces through the flame guard from the ember spirit. So gonna be pretty powerful. Now this is kind of the problem though. While counter helix does pierce through flame guard, axe also has no way of stopping the flame guard, right? He cannot break through the flame guard. Which, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, a two-edged sword, so to say. But anyway, we've got Misery playing the Earth Spirit here. We've got Saxa, 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 uh, I don't know. On the Cotel of the Light, uh, Resolution on the Juggernaut V, on the Axe in the mid, and then it's going to be just Moon Meander on the Clockwork in the offlane. We got Ike's Mike on the Tide Hunter. Seems like he is already going to start out in the jungle. Not even going to bother with the offlane. Tim Mado on the Ember Spirit. We got Yubei playing the Earthshaker. BSJ on the Phantom Lancer. And then last, we got Eagle on the Lashrak. All around. Um, nothing too surprising there. Right? Like, the axe is definitely a pick that I think caught everybody off guard. It makes sense, though. And you can already see the Ember Spirit can't actually do anything. Just having the axe sit here is wonderful because it creates this this pressure where Timano can or has to make a choice, you know. Do I attack him? If I do, well, I'm just going to get beaten up, right? Um, do I go for the Astrid? Well, if I do, I'm just going to get beaten up, but I can't just sit back and do nothing. And so V knows that he doesn't even need to actively apply any pressure to get the benefit of creating psychological pressure. So all he's doing is he's sitting at the front of the creep wave, just saying, you know what? It's your call. You know, you're the one that makes this decision. But I'm just telling you that there's no winning for you. And that's pretty powerful here. So we'll see how this mid lane works out. Uh, Axe is definitely going to have the edge in the early game. However, as the fight continues, uh, Ember Spirit definitely starts being able to actually take on the Axe a little bit better. You know, the Flame Guard actually starts dealing a lot more damage on higher levels. The duration becomes significantly longer. You know, at level 3, I actually expect Timado to start spamming it a little bit um, just to fight back. And again, the Axe has no good way of breaking it. Right. Uh, in the meantime, up at the top, we actually got Moon pretty much dead. Okay, he activates the healing self, but Yubei coming in from the sidelines. Oh, nice dodge! Wow, that was impressive. I'm not saying he's gonna get out, because he very likely... Whoa! Wow! Wow! That was very, very good. I'm not sure if that was Moon playing fantastic, although... Actually, you know what? Moon did play fantastic, but I'm not sure if that's why he escaped, because if the Lashark hits that stun... Then uh, the clockwork is just dead. Oh, yeah, Ember Spirit. Yeah, you can see he's already starting to be a little bit active. His spells are on cooldown. Right, so uh, that's kind of what you gotta do. You uh, you just kind of have to pressure him back. Right, you just gotta pressure him back. You both have a lot of damage, and you both can't do anything about the other's damage. So it's just a matter of fuck it. You know what? If you're gonna be aggressive, I'm gonna be aggressive. Let's go in. Uh, and Ember Spirit is just kind of chilling now. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, he gets it. He does get it. However, this is actually a terrible idea. He gets rooted in place, the stun, the follow-up. Oh, nice. Uh, but V is spinning a lot. Oh, no. <laughs> he... Oh, no, wait. He's got boots. Okay. Okay, seems he's gonna be fine. Yeah. Um. Okay, that was a little bit silly. He started running away from the creeps, which had me worried. But seeing as he's got boots and the Ember Spirit doesn't, seems that we did rush those early on. Yeah, the trap, while nice, you actually don't have any follow-up for. And Eagle really needs to start working on those stunts. I mean, I know they are hard to hit, 
But you're supposed to be a pro player, man, right? Like, you're supposed to hit this shit. Also, can I point out a little cute trick that we saw right there? So, uh, the Lashrak, as you can see, he put the Null Talisman into the backpack and put it back into his inventory. Why did he do that? Um, if you have an item in the backpack and then put it back into your, into your inventory, it takes six seconds for it to become active again, right? So, it takes six seconds until you get benefits from the stats, uh, from whatever active benefits it gives you, whatever... Whatever benefits it provides takes six seconds, right? So it's essentially the same as dropping the item on the floor for six seconds. Uh, so that's what he did, right? He reduced the overall amount of HP and mana he has by getting rid of the Null Talisman, putting this into his backpack, deactivating it, activating the shrine, which means the shrine heals a higher percentage of his maximum HP and mana. And then by the time the shrine is done, the item is going to be active again. That's the logic there. Um, you can definitely do that in late game too. A lot of people make the still make the mistake of dropping their items on the ground. You should actually never do that. Right? So let's say you're playing a Mirana and you got your Aghanims. And you want to go to a shrine. But, you know, with the Aghanims, of course, you got a lot of stats. So the shrine won't really help heal you that much. Um, so you put the Aghanims on the ground and then activate the shrine. Well, you can do the same thing by just putting it into your backpack and then putting it back into your inventory. But with less risk right then there is no chance of somebody coming in and stealing the item because it's not on the fucking ground and um yeah now of course the downside there is that there's uh, no faster way of activating it again right so if you need it any earlier then well that just kind of sucks but uh, it's still safer and i still recommend you do that anyway in the mid lane we got axe going in on timado we also got the earth spirit here but ember spirit turning it around a little bit we got the earth shaker coming in lots of earth lots of spirits but misery is going to be the first blood here. Blood. Yeah, the greed from the axe. And that's honestly just an axe thing. <laughs> right? Like, axe players in general tend to be a little bit um, aggressive about things. I don't know. I think that's just a, a thing the hero lends itself to. In the meantime, Moon going into the mid. Just going to push Yubei away now. Being a little bit aggressive with the Lashrak, but... Nothing, nothing too scary. Now, uh, in the meantime, we haven't really talked about Resolution on the Juggernaut. It was just chilling at the bottom, going for the Helm of the Dominator. Yeah, that's a very popular items, item these days. Very powerful. You know, um, just good early game stats. It's essentially the new, uh, new, uh, what is it called? Drums, right? People don't really buy drums anymore. They get Helm of the Dominator instead, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, and on the other side, we've got BSJ on the Phantom Lancer, who either isn't doing very well, which he isn't, but he still should have something else, right? No. That is bad news. This is all of his items. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Phantom Lancer really doesn't have much at all. And now uh, DC is going to take down the Little Shark really quick. But yeah, Phantom Lancer has actually just been left alone at this top lane, and he's being outfarmed by the Juggernaut by about 15 last hits. At 7 minutes, that's significant. Right, that is 2 last hits, last hits a minute. That, that is huge. That is a very big difference. Um, so, this sucks. He's gonna go for the Helm of the Dominator as well, though. Yeah, again, that's just like drums. That's it. You gotta think of it that way. Don't think of it as a hum of the Dominator. Think of it as drums. When would you buy drums? And it's just like, oh yeah, no, that makes sense. All right, um, Moon Meander going in. He gets the gets the uh, damage in on the Earth Shaker enough to kill him, but goes down in the end. Yeah, the what is it called? What is his ability called? Battery Assault. That's what I was trying to say. Didn't know what is what is it called. <laughs> but anyway, he gets the Battery Assault on the Earth Shaker. Makes it very difficult for. For Yubei, is his name, right? Yeah, Yubei. Yubei to cast anything. And um, there's always a tricky situation. If you're playing an Urshik, you get caught by the clockwork. You just gotta keep spamming your spells and hope. Because it is possible to get a spell out. Um, it's just a little weird at times. It's just gotta be really, really quick. Anyway, uh, BSJ, not doing well at all. Phantom Lancer. He's got himself the the headdress, but not making any further progress. And Eagle, in the meantime, is fighting up at the top. The Lashrak, gonna die again. Honestly, this Lashrak has not worked out. At least he managed to get the kill on the Earth Spirit here, but overall, I would definitely argue 
a bit of a questionable pick. Uh, so far, the Shrug has not been able to do much at all. Right, we saw him miss a bunch of stunts, but his overall game impact has been on about that level. You know, just a bunch of missed stunts. Uh, well, in the mid lane, the stun yet again misses. Come on, guy. <laughs> What's up, my guy? Oh, what's up with that? Alright, poor Eagle. He's not gonna be soaring into freedom today. Gonna be caged down to the earth where he will be forced to train stunts over and over and over again. Until he eventually hits one. I, it's hard to hit, that's for sure, but um, at the current rate, you definitely got a question if it's better to get a Lashrak for this game or if you just want a Ventral Spirit, you know? Do you just want a hero that, yes, less powerful if you do connect with it, but she always connects with it. <laughs> Ike's Mike at the top lane gonna go down, the clockwork just shuts him out. Easy peasy. Not much he can do about it. The battery is so very powerful. And it seems like uh, Clockwork is actually going to max it out as well. Clockwork has a funny talent at level 25, 10 seconds battery, battery assault duration. Which actually means you can have it active always. You just have 100% of it. Which is kind of funny. You know, you're just like, oh hey. Oh, and he finds another one. Uh, it's Yubei. And Urshik is just going to go down. Yeah, that's not going well for uh, Freedom Fighters or Team Freedom or whatever they're called right now. They are not doing well. That is truly a little bit unfortunate. They have an interesting lineup, but... Phantom Lancer ain't got shit. I mean, uh, the Ember Spirit is doing alright, he's working on his Veil of Discord, but... So this is one of the problems I personally have with the, with, with the Ember Spirit. Um, that's just, he isn't super scary on his own. You know? He's just kind of pretty easily locked down if he doesn't go for Blink Dagger and TP Boots and shit. And if you lock down an Ember Spirit, he dies. So, uh, he does deal a lot of damage. If you have a team around him, and you have the Tight Hunter going in with the big Ravage or Shaker follow up, you know? You're creating chaos, and then the Ember Spirit can't jump in and just deal damage without having to worry about dying. Then the hero is intensely powerful. But as just the main guy to run in and just somewhat hope that he doesn't get targeted, it doesn't really work that well. That's a bit of a problem. Also, <laughs> they dominated the siege creep. That's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. Resolution with the helm of the dominator. Now coming into the top lane here. They're looking to keep zoning out BSJ, and this is honestly, this is a very smart play, right? Look at that. He's below the Tidehunter and the Ember Spirit in net worth. Uh, even though he does, of course, have the highest last hits on his team, it's just not really enough, you know, Tidehunter. Um, he's out farming him somehow, even though he died once. I guess it's just ancient creeps, you know, jungle creeps in general. Oh, actually, that must be why BSJ has such a high um, last hit value. You know, he's just got a lot of jungle creeps. In the meantime, mid, another quick pick off under the Shrug. Poor little guy is really not having an easy time. And right now, it seems like Team Freedom is just being drowned out. You know, they are trying to fight back, but DC is simply outclassing them at every corner. It's that straightforward. Now, anything that Team Freedom is trying to do right now just is not working. Not even a tiny little bit. And, um,. That's a bit of an issue. Alright, they activate the Shrine here. And the Smoke as well. Of course, they got the Earth Spirit Initiation. You got the Axe with a Blink Dagger now. So, it's gonna be pretty straightforward if they want BSJ. Doesn't seem like they got Vision on him. Uh, they find the Earth Shaker. They got the Call. Stun, follow-up. Silence, follow-up. Not enough damage, though. Not enough damage. And it doesn't seem like they really want to commit. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. Earth Shaker, of course, you've got a lot of disable. And if you don't manage to chain stun him down, you're gonna get stunned. And then the rest of the team might come in. And that is exactly the kind of situation where the Ember Spirit would thrive. You know? Now, Ember Spirit almost level 10. That's really what you want here. You want that 15% spell damage increase. And BSJ blinks out. Uh, he does have the Battle Hunger on him. Uh, that shouldn't be enough to kill him, though. Too much health regeneration. In the meantime, Ike's Mike goes down somewhere. 
at the bottom line, pushing down the tower. He did get the tower though, so uh, honestly, I would say that's worth it, probably, right? Wonder what resolution is going for. He's got something coming in. Gonna just be the Yasha, so the casual Manta star. That's probably the most reasonable thing you can do. You know, it's just kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, it does a lot. Helps against the slide of fist. And um, it's all around a solid item. If you're really swaggy with it, you'll dodge a Ravage or something. Got a big fight. Taunt on two. A BSJ taking a lot of damage resolution spinning in there. He's trying to burn out the Ember Spirit uh, Flame Guard, but. It's just not really enough. He can't extinguish that for now. Nice blink from me. Uh, he's looking to keep it safe. And uh, it's going to be the end of that. So uh, that was actually, again, pretty decent for DC. right? Not a huge win, but a small one. And all of these small wins, they're starting to add up. Right? Like, that's just how it goes. Like, all of these small wins... Just start add up, start adding up. But uh, on the upside, actually, wait, Emma Spirit didn't go for the fifteen percent spell, spell amp yet. So for now, he doesn't actually deal a crazy amount of damage yet, right? Because like the fifteen percent spell amp is really what makes this build viable. That's why people do this. They don't do this because all of a sudden everybody realized, oh god, Emma Spirit always dealt a lot of magic damage. Well, yeah, he did, but that doesn't mean you buy a whale of Discord on him. Right? But the 15% spell arm. That's why. And also, of course, the fire arm not now dealing more damage. So, uh, Emma Spirit definitely looking for that. And he should be able to get there soon. Should be able to get there soon. Honestly, uh, level 12, I suppose, is the big one. Right? You get the level 2 into the ultimate, which allows you to deal a lot more damage. You have your 1 point into the slide of fist just to catch people. You've got the 15% spell arm ta talent. You know, that's really when you're gonna be shining, and that's where you can really do a lot of damage. Ember Spirit, uh, talking about damage, he's actually taking a bit from that. Cottle Blast, Axe is sitting around. They are definitely scouting out this little encounter here. We've got Moon also sitting at the bottom. He's waiting, playing a calm. All five from Team Freedom here, pushing that tower. Cottle Blast comes flying in, only connects on one. Oh, Moon catches Eagle! The Shark taking a lot of damage, but the Clockwork is in too deep. He's gonna pay for it. Seems like that might actually be the end of it. No, they're looking for more. They're gonna go for Saxa. The Cartel taking a lot of damage, but it's just so risky. And they get the Taunt. We gets one. Ravage comes out only on the Axe, though. And that's really not the target you want. The Axe is tanky. The Axe can take some hits. It's still only a 3 on 4 and 5 fight, though. And V is going to drop. Timado coming in. Seems with a Haste Rune. So he's going to be able to take down the Earth Spirit as well. Resolution is here. The big carry is finally around. He gets one already. Looking for more, but he did not really get the spins he wanted. Or the jumps he wanted. Tidehunter manages to escape. And then he was too far away from the rest of Team Freedom to really secure anything. So, yeah, honestly, I gotta admit, like, Resolution took too much time there. I don't know if his TP was on cooldown or what was up, but he didn't come into that fight when he had plenty of opportunity to do so. And that's just not good. Right? That just doesn't really work. So, yeah, meantime, up at the top, actually, Moon manages to catch out Eagle. Now being chased down by the Ember Spirit, looking for a little bit of a retaliation. Seems like Timano is going to have to settle for not getting it, though. You know, just retreat out. Doesn't have the mana needed to finish that kill. At the bottom, Tidehunter also picked off. Resolution. Surely having a big part in that. Of course, the Juggernaut. Just deals a lot of damage at this point. You know, it's just scary. He's just very, very scary. Alright, we've got the Cuttle Plus yet again flying. Of course, that's one of the big advantages of having that hero. You can always push lanes. You can always be aggressive, you know. No matter what's going on in the game, the cutler will be there to clear it out. <laughs> Just put a blast on it and that's going to be the end of it. And uh, actually, getting very close to his Agonims. So once we have that, I expect uh, a push from DC. It's one of those big pushing items, you know, one of those big items that really enables you to just siege down the high ground and uh, slowly start winning the game. Cottle now got to be caught out though. We got the stun flying. Yep, it connects. Uh, 
pretty tanky hero right now, but he knows he's dead. He's just trying to buy time. Yeah. His team abandoned him. Everybody accepted that was the end of it. Timado, uh, actually gonna go up against the Clockwork here. Moon will die. You can see the intense power of that hero here. And Resolution, nope. Not gonna be able to get there in time. But yeah, you saw right there how much damage the Ember Spirit can do. He just bursts down the, the Clockwork from full. Just destroys him. And there's really not much the guy can do, you know. It's just too much, too much. Uh, TP in, Misery now in a bit of an awkward spot. But he manages to spin out, activates the TP as well, and he will be just fine. Meantime, Resolution starts working on Roshan. Now, they are pinging this out. The Omni Slash comes, drops the Earthshaker right away. Ix Mike now on the run. Resolution does have a spin. He's gonna use that for the time being. Buys him a little bit of distance, and now Saska is coming back in. V is also around. Clockwork, back alive. Everybody's ready to fight, and Roshan is already dangerously low. Which makes this a bit of an awkward situation. Now, the Earthshaker is dead. So that's one of the big advantages DC has if they won't uh, have, if they want to fight right now. Seems that they don't. Seems that both teams are actually just going to settle for leaving Roshan alone. And I'm sure the little guy is, is quite happy about that. You know, he still doesn't quite understand why people always come into his house and start hitting him. But I guess there's not really much he can do about it. So he's just kind of come to accept his fate and move on with his life. And it is, it is a little bit unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, they scouted out one last time just to make sure. But no, Rashan is not being attempted. Titan uh, actually picking up a four staff before the Blink Dagger. So prioritizing the mana, prioritizing the stats. Of course, the utility is nice against the Clockwork as well. And uh, we got the Taunt here. Axe taking a lot of damage. He's pretty damn low. He should die. He's dead. Running around with too little HP. Again, this is just the downside to playing Axe, right? And I, I fully blame the hero for this. There's just something about that hero where even players that usually play safe, they just suddenly turn into assholes and always want to go in no matter what. Right? And they're just like, no, we're going in. And then you're like, but you have 12 HP. No mana. Even if you blink in, you cannot actually call anybody. Right, so this doesn't really work at all. And the Axe player is just like, I am Axe, I'm gonna go in. And it's really your decision if you wanna follow, but I'm going in right now. And you know, like the thing is, everybody does that, and I don't really blame the players for it. We got lightnings on resolution now, that item has definitely gained a lot of popularity recently. Uh, it is powerful, there's no denying that, although I'm not a big fan of of um, lightnings on Juggernaut, just because the hero does have inbuilt crits and as such, you definitely want to maximize how much right click damage you deal, you know? Anyway, they take Rashan, Aegis goes to the Juggernaut, and uh, is the Aghanims ready? Yes, Aghanims is ready. Daytime should be in. Uh, actually, it's gonna be a little while. It's gonna be a little while. Two minutes to go. So. Maybe DC goes for a push now. It seems like they're actually all converging in the, into the mid lane right now. Getting ready. Could have waited until it's daytime. You know, make sure you have the cuddle heal. But uh, for now, it seems they're not that scared. They're fairly confident they can actually do this. And uh, actually, you know what? I can't agree with that. They're looking good. They're looking good. Spin news to push down the tower really quick. Of course, they got the healing ward in a second. So it's going to be fine. And they can now actually start killing the shrines already. That's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal. Those are some early, early shrine kills. And these things are worth a lot of money. 750 gold to the team. So. That's kind of a big deal here. Juggernaut is just very, very far ahead at this point. You know, like. The net worth difference is significant. Now, Phantom Lancer has actually managed to catch up quite nicely. He's got himself his Diffuser Blade. He's got the Helm of the Dominator. Seems he wants a Blink Dagger next, which... Um, I get. Our Blink Dagger is nice. There's no denying that. A little bit questionable. A little bit questionable, that's for sure. You know, you have... Um, you have a lot of damage on the other side that you're going to be struggling a little bit with. You know, uh, maybe that's just me being... Too worried. You know, I always like playing defensive to some extent. Make sure that I survive the fights. But I get the Blink Dagger. It's a good item. There's no denying it. 
but sometimes you just gotta make sure you can actually take some hits. So maybe a Mantra style or possibly even a BKB would have been the safer option. Stun is flying. Doesn't connect with anything. A little bit unfortunate. Force Staff, Blade Mail ready on the axe. That's nice. Uh, we've got the Earth Shaker working on a Splink Dagger. Not Earth Shaker, I'm saying. Earth Spirit working on a Splink Dagger. In fact, he could buy it right now if he wants it. He also picked up a hand of mine just for casual farming and Orchid ready on a clockwork. That's just to deal with. Um, actually, it's good for both the Phantom Lancer and the um, Ember Spirit. You know, you can't defuse a blade yourself anymore. So there's nothing really. There's nothing the Phantom Lancer can really do about about the Orchid um, until he gets a, a Manta Star or BKB, of course. It seems it's going to be the BKB for now. But yeah, Earthshaker doesn't seem like he's got it yet. Wow. Seriously? This guy has no money. He actually doesn't. He has 2,000 net worth. That is actually just really bad. And up at the top lane, we got a quick kill on the Ember Spirit. I actually want to go back and take a look at that really quick. Although, we already know what's going to happen. There's the Ember Spirit. They're going to blink in, taunt him, and then Orchid him, right? Or catch him with that. Just the Orchid immediately silences him up, and it's an Ember Spirit. That hero just doesn't have a counterplay to that until he gets Manta style. And, uh, well, actually, you know what? Never mind, he's got a yours. He's got a yours. So, with the yours, he, of course, does have counterplay, but the nice follow-up with the taunt. A little bit odd that he didn't use the yours right away, though. Um, Should have. Should have. But I guess he was just stunned the entire... No, he wasn't. He definitely had an opening. Nah, whatever. Taunt at the bottom, IX Mike. Taking a lot of damage. They got the battle hunger on the tight hunter. Chasing him down. Missed the core, though, so that should be the end of that. Um, it's a tight hunter. Hero's difficult to kill. You know, really gotta have... You gotta have uh, good execution there. And that wasn't good execution. So, it's better to not take the risk. It seems that uh, DC is just... Just kind of like running around the place. And, yeah, right now it's actually... It's daytime, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is daytime. So, I would expect to see a push now. Honestly. Up at the top, by the way. We've got Clockwork dying. Moon overextending quite a bit. He's just going in deep, you know. Alright. He's just going in deep. Overly aggressive. Overly aggressive. Uh, so on the other side, Titans are now got a Splink Dagger. Urshaker, of course, as we already mentioned, or nothing. The Yules on the Shrug. Uh, pretty important to get a Yules on the Shrug, honestly. Uh, you, you need some sort of way to hit your stuns. And without the Yules, the Yule just doesn't have anything. It's just kind of a little bit, little bit awkward like that. A little bit awkward like that. Phantom Lancer. Uh, seems to actually go for his Guardian. I don't like that. I actually don't like that one bit. I think right now the Phantom Lancer has to go either BKB or Manta style. Those are really his only options. Or Aghanims because he's really swaggy. But I don't think he is. Like if he was really, really swaggy and just felt like showing off how massive his dick is, then you go for Aghanims. But if that's not what you want to do... Then you go BKB or Manta. Right? You gotta have a way to get rid of the Orchid. Because uh, as much as they just managed to turn around the little gank Moon Meander had on the on the Phantom Lancer, that can also go the other way very easily. Especially in a team fight. Gotta have a way to deal with the silence. And uh, God, actually, they catch the. Whew. Catch the Titan today. Yeah, all of these uh, kind of unexpected kills, you know, I thought maybe something up was going to happen up here, but no. Resolution manages to sneak a quick pick off. So. Yeah. Alright. And he is now getting the Scarly. That is something I can dig on the Juggernaut for sure. Right. Not, not sure how much I like it against specifically the Dias team, but it doesn't really matter because he's just so far ahead. He's essentially a Scotty ahead. And at that point, I think it's really not that important what you buy. It only matters that you do buy something. Right? That's it. Just make sure you spend your money. Doesn't matter what you spend it on. Just spend it. Because you have so much of it, and the enemy has so little compared to you, that uh, 
you're just going to be able to overwhelm them on that basis alone. 20 damage, 20 attack speed, 8 in all stats, and oh, 25 is coming up. Um, maybe? I don't know. I wonder who's, what he's going to go for. 175 Blade Fury DPS. That actually means that the Blade Fury is powerful in the late game, funnily enough. You know, then you have... Uh, how much is that? 330 damage per second, 5 seconds? Yeah, I, that's a lot of damage, man. What's that? 1600? 1650? Yeah, 1650 damage. Oh, we got the Juggernaut stunned out. He's fine for the time being, though. He's just so tanky. That's what I mean. Just buy something, anything. Doesn't really matter. Scotty keeps him alive for the time being. He activates his healing ward. It's alright. Gonna try to actually... No, Misery seems like he's gonna go down without any help from a solution. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of thought it was gonna go in right there, but... I suppose not. They do the Yules, but... Uh, don't quite manage to follow it up with a stun. And now Eagle's just standing there. Goes down. They got the hook shot on... Uh, Junbei, down he goes. Axe in the meantime, picked off by the Phantom Lancer. So, so far it's a 2 for 2. And that's gonna be the end of it. So, they all disperse. This fight actually did work out for the Dyer, funnily enough. They won that one. They won that one, as you can see. Uh, quite a bit of a difference. 1000 gold and 1500 experience in favor of the Dyer day. So, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Managed, definitely managed to. To get something out of that. Now, that could have been better, of course. You know. <laughs> like, while they won the fight, it definitely wasn't a dream fight. But I feel like at this point, they're just going to be happy with everything they can get. There's also a funny thing you can do with uh, both Manta Style and Mjolnir. If you got it, you know, you activate the Manta Style and then Mjolnir, one of the illusions. And you just push them into a lane. Makes it pretty nice in terms of just, like, pushing of lanes, I suppose. Right? You just get a lot of kills that way. Um... A lot of last hits you can get. I also like lightnings against Phantom Monster. For this exact reason. It's kind of neat. Um, so again, even though usually I'm not a huge fan of lightnings on Juggernaut. A perfectly fine item here. A perfectly fine item here. You always gotta keep in mind the situation in the game. Right? Gotta keep in mind the situation in the game. What you're going up against. What is going to be good in this particular circumstance. And lightnings are a fine item here. Absolutely a fine item. Manta style, yeah, good, <laughs> glad to see that, glad to see that, um, as I have mentioned a few times, I think that uh, the Phantom Lancer really doesn't have much of a choice here, right, you gotta go for BKB or you go for the Manta style, and one of them is a bit more aggressive, one of them is a bit more defensive, but in the end, it gotta be either one. Resolution now going into the top here. I'm gonna start pushing down this lane. And uh, honestly, this is just looking bad for Team Freedom. They're just being drowned out. Like, that's what's happening right now. They are being drowned out. Slowly but surely, DC is cutting off all of these access points on the map. You know, they're taking all of this, all of this farm, all of these possible resources that the Dyer could be getting away. And just not taking any risks while doing it you know it's just keeping it simple they're just saying all right you know what we're just gonna keep going just gonna keep doing our thing and you guys you can feel free to try to interrupt us or anything but uh if you do we will kill you and you can see that uh, they just get a free barracks completely free right no resistance at all and that's just not good news the juggernaut now rooted out but of course the still helps him in that situation now they still got the edges so that makes this fight even worse for freedom dc can just walk in you see that the spin is active tower taking a lot of damage resolution actually gonna play it safe and they get the taunt on eagle Ravage coming in, big Ravage, doesn't connect on Resolution though, so the Juggernaut is able to roam freely, start dealing a lot of damage. And actually, Ike's Mike is just caught in a horrible position right now. BKB activated from Moon Meander, they even got the taunt for really just good measure. <laughs> no, no, no need for that at all. They use the Omni Slash, doesn't connect very well at all, bounces back to the Juggernaut, even, not the Juggernaut, to the Phantom Lance Illusions, even after the Juggernaut had used... Had used it on the Earthshake to try and prevent that. But in the meantime, fight in the background manages to secure the Ember Spirit and Resolution. He's just going in on BSJ. That's gonna be the kill. The Aegis is finally procced, but that just means the Juggernaut will be back with full HP. He would have suicided into a tower basically anyway, so. Um, 
yeah, like no matter what, the juggernaut dies right here, so that doesn't really change anything. Mid tower now under siege. And Team Freedom looking a little bit looking a little bit shook, I gotta say. And that's understandable. Ember Spirit losing a lot of mana in the meantime. The stupid disco horse goes down again. And the barracks are dead. The second set of barracks down. Won't be too surprised to see a GG, a GG soon. And honestly, um, Freedom just got horribly outclassed here. That wasn't even close. Right? The score doesn't tell the full story here. So 21 to 15. But Team Freedom never stood a chance. Never. They just got outplayed at every corner. There was no moment where it was like, yeah, Team Freedom really won that one. No, they didn't. Just lost everything. The best I could say is that there was one encounter where they came out slightly ahead. <laughs> and that's it. No, that's just not good. That's just not good. And GG is called. The Earthshaker already disconnects. Um, bad mannered. Did he, did he call GG? Oh, I can't go up. I don't think he called GG. Alright. Alright. Anyway. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating on the video. Uh, and I uh, hope, hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye.